It's the one I split from this one, so I'm going to see if it needs a second brood box or if it just needs to stay how it is. There are some frames like this one here, if I can get this one out. Still aren't even drawing out the comb, so they haven't brought it out off this. This is the foundation here, like they have this one. See all this comb? They've drawn off the middle section. But that looking good. I just wanna fill in some gaps here a little bit. Set you guys up here. Today we're just checking on the, the bees we recaptured uh, when our bees swarmed. So I put a video out about that. If you haven't already watched that video, go check it out. Uh, but we're just checking on those bees and checking on all the bees, but specifically the bees that we captured from the swarm. I had to take the middle brood box out of that one. That's what we wanted to get done. Uh, since we never put all the frames back in, we only had six frames out of the 10 frame uh, box. And we saw the branch where we cut it, cut it off the tree still in there. So we were able to take that out and reduce that box down to two brood boxes. So anyway, keep on going. This is a queen excluder, so the queen cannot get through this. So that's all honey that's been cured and brought down to the proper humidity level and then they cap it off to store it for the winter. So they're just starting to draw this out, this yellow here. It's all just, they're just drawing it out. Drawing it out a little more. So these bees are probably putting in the honey or pollen. So they got one cell filled so far on this side. So we'll reverse this and put this back in this way. So they'll build out the other side, so they get a little bit of heat, a more even frame. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put the queen excluder back on, and this other top root box. So we're gonna split them off. All right, just got done checking on the bees. Uh, they're all doing real well. Got some 
queen cells we're able to knock off, um, which could potentially lead to, to more swarming. So um, some routine maintenance that uh, every beekeeper has to do. Some of the um, frames weren't all the way drawn out. I don't know if I said when we were working actually on the beehives, the bees draw the comb out, um, work from the middle out um, in the box, uh, both directions. And uh, we were able to uh, switch some frames around and make it so they would start uh, putting comb on the frames that did not have comb yet. Uh, coming up soon we will be splitting so definitely we're going to be putting a video out about that uh, but this video I just wanted to kind of do a follow up on the swarms and tell you guys that they're doing good and I think that's all for the bees so I have one more thing to tell you um, and that's in the greenhouse so we'll head over there. Alright in the greenhouse and I just want to do a follow up on the video I just put out how you can make a tomato trellis for under $15 do a follow-up video on that a little bit and tell you one thing that I would do to improve that trellis to make it stronger uh, for heavier plants some professional trellises uh, in place of the top run of string that I put across for uh, attaching on my vertical strings to for the tomatoes they use a nine gauge wire which holds uh, heavier plants uh, in my case my tomato trellis sagged uh, which isn't uh, necessarily bad I just want to give you a more sturdy option uh, for a trellis that might hold up cucumbers or bigger varieties of tomatoes like beef state tomatoes, big boy tomatoes, bigger varieties of plants that are heavier. So anyways, I just wanted to tell you how you can improve uh, the trellis design that I had in that video a little more. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe, uh, share this with your friends and family, and we will see you on the next one.